Hi, I'm Jaeyoung Kim from Yonsei University. In today's talk, I'd like to talk about OCDCAN, which is a generative adversarial network model that improves the performance of synthesizing tabular data using your ordinary differential equations. This work was done in collaboration with Jin Sung-jeon, Jae-eun Lee, ji hyung and No sung Park. In recent years, since many web-based applications use tabular data, many researchers have focused on various tasks using tabular data. Especially, synthesizing samples that seem to be rare but actually not can greatly benefit many applications. One easy example can be using such synthetic data as additional training data. Going further, it provides us with some benefit in terms of protecting privacy, and this is because synthetic data has no direct reference to the real data, as real data is no more used after training is done, and after that, synthesized data is generated from an arbitrary latent vector. Tabular data usually has an irregular distribution and multimodality in many cases, and existing techniques of synthesizing tabular data do not uh, consider these properties and, as a result, have a room for improvement. So, considering these properties, we designed the conditional tabular GAN, which is an um, improved version of existing tabular GAN models. Using state-of-the-art methods like neural ordinary differential equations, its layers learn and solve ordinary differential equations in them, and thus we named it OCT GAN. Before I introduce uh, our proposed methods, let me talk about Neural Ordinary Differential Equations, and ODE for short. And ODE is a method which approximates solution of ordinary differential equations uh, using neural network. ODE can be described as following equation 1, and it is the same as equation of rich neural network. And as we take smaller steps of time interval at equation 1, we can get closer to the solution of ODE and can interfere the network as continuous. The H sub t is a hidden vector at time or layer t in neural network. As you can see in following equation 2, a neural net F learns a system of ODE to approximate derivative of hidden vector with respect to t in an ODE is, and equation 2 can be rewritten as equation 3. In other words, the internal dynamics of the hidden vector evolution process is described by a system of ODEs parameterized by theta sub f. And ODEs have several good characteristics for tabular data generation. As I said earlier, when you use an ODEs, you can interpret a layer T as continuous and it allows you to handle a network more flexibly. And we used this characteristic on discriminator. The second thing is that ODE function is homeomorphic. Let phi sub t as a mapping from t sub 0 to t sub m created by an ODE, then phi sub t is a homeomorphic mapping, which means the topology of the input space of phi sub t is preserved in its output space. We applied this property to the generator, and I'll give you more details on that in the next slides. Uh, this is the overall architecture of OCDCAN. OCDCAN is fundamentally based on WGNGP and neural ODE. First, we pre-processed the raw data set with mode-based normalization and sampling a condition from pre-processed data. The condition is concatenated with a noise vector Z, which has Gaussian distribution. Generator can create a fake table using the concatenated vector, and we feed it into the discriminator. And discriminator decides whether input is a fake sample or not. There are more details about discriminator and generator, which I'll explain from now on. Since the discriminator of OCDCAN consists mostly of the NOD layers, the layers of the network can be considered continuous and thus you can get hidden vector at time t. For example, you can extract hidden vector at 1.7th layer of the network because these time points t are continuous. Discriminator of OCDCAN classifies whether an input sample is a real or fake using m hidden vectors, and the number of hidden vectors are a hyperparameter. 
The time boys teeth are also trained and it is difficult to with the ordinary gans because its layers are discrete. We calculated the author sign distance between the distribution of the sample and that of a fake class using M hidden vectors. This is a detailed architecture of discriminator. To determine whether a sample X is fake or not, use M hidden vectors at time T subs I and there are M time points. Since T subs I is also trained, time points can change during training in the process of locating the optimal positions. As you can see in the red box, M hidden vectors are concatenated and form a, a vector H sub C. Since a set of hidden vectors represents a trajectory, the discriminator can make decisions through the entire trajectory. When you classify samples using hidden vectors, the discriminator is able to make decisions with more information of the samples. Concretely, suppose that the two trajectories from T sub 0 to T sub M are all similar except around T sub I. Usually, discriminators can hardly classify them since it only considers the less representation. While our trajectory-based classification can correctly classify them by considering the trajectory at T sub i. And the generator of a city GAN is a conditional generator, which creates a fake sample from a noise vector and condition. We put a latent vector z and a condition into the mapping network which consists of audio layers in order to transform it and using this transformed vector g prime the generator makes fake samples and i'd like to note that the audio used for this mapping network is independent from the audio of the discriminator and the figure shows an example of two stage approach at the first stage, the condition and a noise vector are concatenated and transformed using the ODE-based mapping function. Since this function is homeomorphic, the transform maintains original topology. This function is also continuous normalizing flow since it induces a continuous transformation while transforming the input onto another space. And then at the second stage, the generator creates a fake sample using the transformed vector, and these samples have a similar distribution to the real data. To generate fake samples using a noise vector sampled from the Gaussian distribution is known as suboptimal. The initial input vector contains non-trivial information on what to generate, like conditions, so we'd like to maintain the relationships among in initial input vectors while transforming them onto another latent vector space suitable for generation. And it can be achieved by using the output of the homeomorphic function. We've conducted extensive experiments and the results for likelihood estimation, classification, regression, and clustering are shown in these slides. For the likelihood estimation, we used seven datasets which are simulated using the Gaussian mixture model and the Bayesian network. For classification and clustering, we used five datasets including adult, census, credit, cover type, and intrusion. And for regression, uh, we used a new dataset. To evaluate models, we first split the raw dataset into training set and test set. And after that, we trained the models and synthesized the table using a pre-trained models. Then we trained the number of machine learning models suitable each task and calculated the scores using the test set. First, we synthesized the data with pre-trained model and calculated a uh, likelihood for example given real sample and vice versa. On the simulated dataset using Gaussian mixture model, CLBN and FreeBN show fluctuating results. TVA shows good performance for likelihood of fake data given real data on some cases, but for likelihood of real data given fake data, it shows worse performance than the other models, which means mod collapse. However, it shows reasonable performance in general. 
Also, when compared with other GAN-based models, OCDGAN outperforms all the other models. For classification tasks, uh, some GAN models fail to calculate the F1 score appropriately due to severe mode collapse, and OCDGAN, including our ablation models, achieve the best F1 scores on all of the cases. While all baselines show negative R-square scores, which is unfitted for a regression task, OCDGAN achieve the positive R-square score. I summarized the results for clustering task by the top two models and OCDGAN outperforms in almost all cases. Here's the visualization of the interpolation between the two noise vectors G1 and G2. We interpolated many intermediate vectors by following equation 6 about columns from other datasets. In our observation, a silicon can interpolate in a smooth way than other models. As you saw on the left slide, simple models like PFBN and TVAA show a better performance on the likelihood estimation, while sophisticated models like TGAN and OCDGAN do better on machine learning tasks like classification, regression, and clustering. OCDGAN outperforms others on almost all cases, regardless of tasks, except for multi-class classification tasks like cover type and intrusion. All methods are not good enough for the multi-class classification task, which means it should be studied further. And this is the end of my presentation. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.